Hi everyone, this is Emily again and Noah with a part four, I think it is. And the topic that we're going to be going over and discussing today is to do with idolatry. Um, so just a backstory, when I was uh, lost and I wasn't walking in the faith, I think that I naturally had this understanding because of what other people taught and said about idols the Old Testament kind of statue or golden calf kind of understanding um, like such uh, when the people in Moses' time made a golden calf uh, that's kind of what I would associate with it but then when God started to draw me and just reveal truth to me he helped me to see and understand that idolatry goes beyond that so I'm going to pass it on to Noah and ask you uh, how idolatry, how does idolatry go further than just uh, something that's merely a statue? Yeah, well, the New Testament really lays it out in more detail for us as opposed to just talking about a, a golden statue. A lot of the pagan cultures of that time would would worship certain idols and whatnot. That's why we see an emphasis on that on the in the Old Testament. But we see, especially in the Pauline letters, um, talking about how, how idolatry is not just about golden calves and whatnot, but you could literally idolize anything. Ephesians 5, uh, 3 through 5 says this, But sexual immorality and impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you, as it is proper among saints. Let there be no foolishness, let there be no filthiness nor foolish talk nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that, uh, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So he's listing off these different sins about, um, about uh, filthiness and uh, crude joking and uh, so forth, and it actually... Um, is correlating some of those with idolatry. So we could see right here that those different things can be classified as idolatry. And idolatry is very serious in the eyes of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10, where it says, Be not deceived, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. We can see even in that text, the second one that is listed is idolaters, that they will have no inheritance in the kingdom of God. And I think that's very important for people to take into consideration that you can literally idolize anything. I think this is why, one of the reasons anyways, why Jesus said, Whosoever comes after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. If any man does not hate his mother, brother, sister, and yea, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Which in you need to love God more than all of these people because you can idolize them. You can put them in a place on a pedestal in your life above that which they are and end up loving them more than you love God and ultimately that's idolatry we see in Exodus where it talks about having no idols before me people might just think that or having no gods before me people just might think that that's like not literally physically before him but as well too I think it's talking about before him as in love like you need to love God first and then you can love other people and that's very important to take into consideration. Uh, I wanted to read other, one other verse here, but I don't know if you wanted to expand upon anything else that I said or uh, just... No, uh, go, go ahead with this verse and then I'll add in. Yeah, okay, so it's Colossians 3.5. It says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. So once again, we see in the New Testament something outlined as idolatry that people would not typically make the connection of idolizing something. It's saying greed, if you are coveting after things, if you are, you know, just wanting bigger barns, bigger, bigger houses, like, like it says uh, Jesus was talking about the rich man. He said, you know, I'll have a merry good life and I'll tear down my barns and big builders, a uh, bit... Uh, Bill Bigger, we can tell that that man was most likely in the sin of idolatry uh, because he was putting his material possessions before that of God and thus he was in greed, which is idolatry. 
um, like it says here in Colossians 3 5. So one thing I wanted to add in is that when it comes to viewing idolatry one might think of oh, okay I get it uh, you can idolize a drug you know your, your addiction to a drug your addiction to alcohol and things like that you know things that are kind of blatantly obviously uh, wicked in the scriptures and clear that they're not of God and that they're a sin um, and you shouldn't be walking in those things but what I want to ask is if you can think of some more you know examples that wouldn't necessarily be inherently sinful like things that you could possibly idolize that um, you know, maybe specific things in a person's life that they don't necessarily, uh, or it's not necessarily inherently sinful, but it obviously can become. What are some things that you can think of off the top of your head that people might be idolizing? Yeah, well, kind of going back to what I said before earlier about the greed in Colossians 3 5, greed is not necessarily something where it's like a drug or it's something where it is um, sexual immorality. But it can be a disposition of your heart that manifests in different types of ways. So it's very important to understand that you can idolize something in your heart, that you can put something in your heart in a pedestal above that which its proper place is to be. So that could even be like we were kind of talking about family members or talking about um, a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You know, many people, they would rather choose their boyfriend or girlfriend. They would rather choose some man or woman, of, uh, some man or woman that's not of God above doing God's will. They would rather choose those people and live for those people when those people are in opposition to God's will. And then ultimately they are idolizing those people. So, um, it, it, you know, you can idolize something in your heart. You can idolize literally anything, anything that you want to hold on to and cling on to and it's displeasing to God but you'd rather put that in your life instead of that which uh, loving God ultimately that can become sin right so yeah and um, one of the common things that I saw uh, I used to like my high school and elementary school but mainly in high school I went to a Christian school and there's a lot of people that were wealthy and um, just really focusing on their future and what they're going to do in their future and just their career and stuff and it's not necessarily inherently sinful to you know have goals with what you want to do but if you make that to be the most important thing you know as if it's anything else too and then you just kind of throw God in the mix there um, it's definitely shows where your heart is and that you're idolizing these things over God and I actually watched a testimony recently and someone said um, that that's how she used to be she used to add God into her day as mm. if he was you know a, a vitamin and then that was it you know like it wasn't yeah. like sur her whole life was surrounded uh, and surrendered to him so I don't know if you can think of anything else that you want to add or any other examples or anything that you've personally seen in your life that people don't really you know that people might not be aware of that they could potentially be idolizing yeah well one thing that you can further look at the definition of idolizing is obviously we know from the ten commandments it says you shall have no gods before me but you have to realize as well too you can make something into a god in your heart you know what i mean many people they create a god in their own image and thus they are idolizing themselves or they even make themselves the god of their own life it's very important to understand that you can treat other things in the position of which god is deserving and thus you make a god out of that when you are placing that above loving god and idolatry is really um it, it can be really dangerous and really sinful honestly because we know the greatest commandment is to love the lord our god with everything that we have and to love our neighbor as ourself but idolatry, um, you know, is when we put something above that, keeping the greatest commandment, loving our God, right? So I just want people to be aware of that definition as well, too, and to examine their lives with that definition as well. 
So that's pretty much what I have to say about the topic, unless you wanted to include any last thing. Um, I guess I want to touch on, I mean, there's so many different things that you could just not realize that it, you're putting in a place in your life where you're idolizing it. And, uh, you know, I, I have my testimony online and everything, but long story short is that I was pretty much idolizing, filling or finding someone to fill the void in my life. Like that was what, that was one of the things that I was idolizing the most was to be with somebody. So you can even idolize certain circumstances, uh, certain, certain people, yeah, certain yeah. people. But like, I mean, in terms of circumstances, I mean like, to, you know, to get married or, you know, certain, you kind of fantasize about certain things and then you make that, that's what drives you. And, um, and then you can incorporate God into that and be like, let me yeah. be, you know, let me be with this person. Let me get, you're praying to God basically for what you are idolizing or what you want, you know? Um, but yeah, I just wanted to speak on that because it's good to give examples so that people understand that there's, you know, so many different things that you can idolize. And let me say this as well too, in closing, um, it's very important to understand when somebody's idolizing something, they're trying to find fulfillment in something that could honestly be good, but outside of God's, God's way of doing it ultimately. You know what I mean? Like Emily m mentioned, with marriage or even looking up to people and so forth, these things can be inherently good, but it becomes idolatry when people are putting that um, above, kind of like I was saying earlier, and they're trying to find fulfillment in those things outside of God's will, outside of God's timing and so forth. Um, and idolatry really just gets you to try to hold on to things, you know, it really clings onto your heart so it can be dangerous, right? But the Bible says that God will cleanse his children from all their idols mm, right. in the book of Isaiah. So we praise God yeah. for that. And that's what we pray for your guys' lives as well, too, that are watching this video. So um, be blessed in Jesus' name, guys. Amen.